he's a big guy, you know. He's got uh, a huge dimension as a character. He's a, um, a bit of a philosopher, a bit of a theologian, a, a trained mechanical engineer, a, an architect. Uh, he reads a lot. Uh, he has a multiplicity of interests. He's kind of Lear-like in his dimension. And uh, whenever you can play a character like that over seven, seven films now, eight, um, it's a marvelous thing. It doesn't happen that often. And uh, I'm excited about the idea of millennials, who many of whom were too young to come to the theater seven years ago. Uh, we're going to have our old fans plus a, a whole host of new fans who uh, are going to bring an awareness of what the world is today, which is different than what it was seven years ago to this movie, which is, I think, going to be huge. We, we, we work with the writers for weeks, months, getting a script, and, and the, the scariest time for Orrin and myself is when we have to send the script to Tobin. Because he's like, I'm interested, but I'm not going to commit just yet. And it's like, man, I hope he likes it, hope he says yes, because how do you do a movie without Tobin part of it, whether he's in it or his voice or flashback or flash forward yeah. or a video, there's, there's always got to be something of, of him in this. And then he'll say, yeah, I'm in, but, and then Tobin <laughs> will spend the next couple but Where's weeks. my dance scene? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And then he'll come in rewriting all of his dialogue. Just so you know, the majority of his dialogue and all of his, and I'm going to call them romantically soliloquies, are, uh, 100%, he writes them all. Hundred uh, percent. absolutely him. writes them all. Really? Yeah. Yep. When did that? When did that start? On the first movie, or did that start later? Didn't have any words. No. Any lines in the first? Two, remember three? Yeah. You know, it, started, it started. It started. It started with two. Yeah. Uh, uh, because I was working with Donnie Wahlberg, and Donnie had this very strong sense of truth: what he would say and what he wouldn't say. And he would say, "Such a Boston guy." Yeah. 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 <laughs> so uh, you know, we, Donnie and I, we had some time before we had to shoot. They were still working in the house. And so we had seven days, something like that. And uh, so we had time to rework those lines that took place where Donnie would go out of the room and he'd come back into the room. And we just were able to make it, uh, fill it with more tension, make it more cat and mouse between he and I, and also gave me an opportunity to say some things to him that were on John Kramer's mind and, and give some sort of raison d'etre to what he was tr what he was after what was what he was thinking about and uh, that was that was very cool to have that but opportunity just, uh, but with like you just hearing him talk for 20 minutes would you not have him write his own stuff I mean, listen to him. he's better than a writer we've hired I mean, he knows this character. He, he's lived this character for 14 years. Well, i got to give credit to James Wan and Lee Wanell, who, because some of the concepts uh, were there in Saw 1. Appreciate Your Life was there in Saw 1. And that's the concept that most people really relate to. And things like the treatment of the uh, terminally ill by the medical community, that was there in Saw 1. It comes back Again. in Saw 6. Yeah. So... A lot of the themes keep coming back, and uh, those are things that are on people's minds subconsciously. So when all of a sudden they come out in the film like that, people go, oh, that's what, that's what. And that's always rewarding to have a chance to create that kind of music.